So, we removed the broken shift fork for reverse, and to do so, it's not easy but it ain't hard. This pin right here, right there, you can't drive it down that way, you have to drive it out that way, so you have to get something put in there. I used this little Allen, or not Allen key, this little Torx driver and tapped it in as far as I could and then I had to end up breaking my little screwdriver. I bent the tip of the screwdriver, stuck it down in there, grabbed onto a pair of pliers and drove it the rest of the way out. So that was not fun. So that's all ready to go. There's my spacer on there. Make sure that your spice spacers are in there. Gear stack, other spacer. So, side cover, ready to go. Shift fork. Down at the bottom. I have to hold on to that lever right here with one hand and put that reverse gear in there with the other I'll just say whoever designed this was an asshole Sure your chain is as far off to that side as possible. I'm gonna try to work your shift fork in at the same time. Let you work that gear in. and pay attention to noises because just as that dropped in. My spacer fell off. <sighs> oh, yes. So, pay close attention to the noises that you hear. If you hear something that sounds like a click tick or something falling off, you should probably check. It may not seem like a big deal. If you go running that sled with that spacer down in there, god damn it. it went again. And this time, unfortunately, it did what it did last time. I don't know where it is. Let's see if I can work it out again. The worst part is when it falls down behind these gears and it goes down into the bottom, because you have to take that bottom gear completely out to get to it. Tricky. The last time I put a little bit of uh, grease on there just to make it sticky. Yeah, that time she fell when I watched it. I don't know if I can get that with a magnet. Well, the good news for you is that I get to show you how to put this back together. Because I can't get it out of there. So I have to take the bottom gear out to get to my spacer that fell in there. This is why it sucks. Pick back up when uh, I start putting her back together. Fished it out of there. Yummy. All right, so let me shine some light down on this. 
So there's a spacer here. There's the bearing. These three nuts come off of there. This plate comes off and that bearing comes right out. So, go in reverse, put the spacer back on. That asshole spacer can go over there. So, got a chain hanging out from the top here. We're going to take this gear with these pins sticking out. We're going to set it into our chain. Make sure it sits down on her all the way and engages all the teeth correctly. You can also do this out here. here it slips over the end of the drive shaft through that gear just like so then this gear fits right over top of there like so on this every time and I keep having to take it out so it makes it a pain in the ass to get it out because I have to turn it and turn it and turn it and turn it to get out but that's what we want so you've got this little piece and a washer this little piece right here don't lose that it's only 13 cents but that's so hard to find no longer available no longer available because this one was bent up. I just flattened it back out with a hammer. So the bolt goes into there. Spring. Red Loctite. Could be doing it wrong, I don't know. I've been lathering it up. Stick it in. And then tighten her down. I'm not sure if there's some spec or torque to tighten it to, but. Okay, so it's a pain in my ass. We finally got it in place. So now, that's in place. First thing we need to do is take the half inch socket with the short extension, which I don't think I have. But I do have a deep hole socket and a different ratchet. Alright, so. Tighten this one first. Made the mistake before of not tightening this one first. And there's a stud that comes in through the back of the chain case. Don't over tighten it either. Just snug. I don't know what the torque spec is on, but my torque spec is just snug. So 
at the back of the chain case. It uh, pushed it through and it was a pain in the ass to get it back in. So, just a little bit of Loctite on here. Probably overkill, but what ups? This one's the one that holds the battery tray. The bottom one is good to go. Some of these are easier to start in with a socket, but. Short rail socket and extension. No, I didn't put Loctite on that one either. Definitely gonna put Loctite on this one though. Cause the last time that I was in here, after I put it in, it was uh, loose. Now that I know that this is back together correctly. And you kinda gotta fish for that one. It's not too bad though. Do you want to make them all finger tight before you go ramming at home? Because if you tighten them all down, you won't be able to line the other ones up. This one. The bolt goes in and the washer goes on. Put a little Loctite on there. Mm -hmm. Fail. Alright, so. Alright, so. Now. We're gonna go through shift lever. Into there. So we don't want to snug our chain case down all the way. Just shouldn't tighten that. Somebody was knocking at the door, so I kind of like lost track of what I was doing. So we're going to tighten this one. And knock tight this one. Oop. My neighbor does small injury repair. And he says you can never have too much lock tape. There's such thing as too much Loctite. I'm glad once we have this all back together and moving again. Alright, so. Also, I want to make sure this is adjusted correctly. So right now it's not in reverse. So I'm going to just loosen this back. Until I can just slip it over that stud. <clears throat> Turn it the wrong way. The reverse fork that was on there before was worn down. Adjusted differently. So I back this out some. I'm going to put my nut back on there.
because I'm going to snug these lock nuts down. So I'm assuming they're going to be half inch. Because everything else has been half inch or 14. But i got to go find a half inch box end. Because I'm not turning that by hand. Alright, so this is the crucial part. Because if you put this in incorrectly, the wires interfere with the reverse lever. Now before I took this apart, I took a picture of the way the wire was routed, just so I could put it back together correctly. Okay, and before I forget, this tensioning bolt, from what I'm told by my Smallinger Repair Guru, is that you want to tighten this bolt down by hand as tight as you can. And this tensions the chain. Somebody else told me to tighten it down all the way and back it off and then tighten it by hand. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to tighten it down until it stops. Originally, this thing was almost all the way in. Alright, so that's tightened all the way. We're going to back it off. We're going to snug it in by hand. They're not satisfied with this, so. I'm just going to snug it in until it's just snug and then I'm going to back it off just a little bit and I'm taking the lock that lock nut down which is a 14 millimeter alright so this little one that holds the uh, dipstick tube is an 11 millimeter just a random size I wish I could say this was fun, but guess what? It wasn't. Um, I'm sure that most people probably skipped through a lot of this video, didn't watch much of it, but it's probably going to be a long video. I'm going to try to make sure that the, the best content's in there and there's not a bunch of crap. It's just going to take me a while to edit. So I think she's ready. I hope she's ready. I don't want to have any more breakdowns. Um, I'm thinking about uh, this one's liquid cooled. I am definitely thinking about putting on some brackets. And putting some uh, like four wheeler tires on this thing. I don't know. I don't want to tear my skis up, but I need to keep doing some test runs to make sure everything's good to go. Let me know what you think.